Hey, what's up guys? This is Strategy here. Let's talk Apple Vision Pro. So I have used this Apple Vision Pro since, I guess like nine months ago. That was, uh, I guess day one since it came out, February of 2024. And this whole thing plus Apple Care plus taxes cost $4,760 out of my pocket. That's a lot of money. And honestly, I was really excited the first, you know, first month, I guess, first few days, first a couple of months, I use it every day. And then after that, honestly, I've probably just been putting it in, in this case, you know, this travel case, and barely touched it since then. But something changed. So they came out with the Vision OS 2.2 beta one just a few days ago, and I'm been more excited now, again, to use the Apple Vision Pro, and I use it almost every day now. And it's not just the content consumption, which is great on the Apple Vision Pro. It's the productivity. Um, and this new feature they added is the ultra wide screen for the Mac virtual display. When you use it with, you know, your Mac, like in this case, the, I have this M1, uh, MacBook Pro. And it's amazing. It's huge. It's, it's, it's awesome. And you might say, okay, yeah, the Meta Quest or whatever has it, or the VR headset has it. Yes, of, of course it does. And Apple is always late to the game, but they implement it really well. And it's awesome. I'm going to sound like an Apple fan more, which I kind of am. But, you know, if they do something not great, I'm going to say that too. Um, and we'll go, uh, we'll go over pros and cons of the Vision Pro in a little bit. But let me show you the Mac virtual display in ultra wide screen. Let's, let's put it on. Okay, I'm going to put this thing on. And of course, it's still heavy. It's still huge. Um, let me go ahead and record the screen so you guys can see what I see. Okay, so you should see what I see now on my Vision Pro. I'm gonna try to move my head, you know, slowly. I will try to remember that. And so that way, you're looking from my perspective, won't get too much of a headache. But anyways, when you look at your laptop, the same thing, you see this little button on there, you click on it, and it connects. That's all you have to do to connect to your laptop. Granted, it's only work for the Mac. You know, you can do like uh, remote desktop and all that stuff for Windows. But if you use a Mac, if you're within the ecosystem, it works amazingly well. Like it, you don't need to plug it in. You don't need to do anything to the laptop or set up as long as the same iCloud account. It just works. And I'm going to move this out a little bit. And this, you can see, this is the default, like a, a normal size uh, virtual display that you've been able to use this since day one of the release of the Vision Pro. But it's now curved a little bit. I'm going to try to attempt to show you just a little bit. So it's instead of like completely flat, it's now curved slightly, and and that's that. But otherwise, resolution resolution still the same. But what's magical is the ultra wide. And let me show you. So I'm gonna click on the ultra wide, and the displays now wrap around me. And this is small. Like it it you know it's it's it you can definitely expand this out. Let me show you. So. Um, with this, Apple says it's, it's equivalent to two physical 4K screen displays, which I believe. Um, let's take a look at the resolution though. Uh, is it displays? So the res resolution right now is at 5120 by 1440. So that's a lot of real estate, screen real estate. As you can see here, you know, you can move it back and forth. It's super huge, super wide. Vertically or horizontally, it's not, you know, it's not a lot of space, it's only 1440. I guess that's what vertical, right? Yeah. And then, but the, the horizontal screen real estate is just amazing. And this is already bigger from the perspective of the wear. It's already bigger than like two, I don't know, 40 inch screens, physical screens. But what's crazy is that you can, you know, obviously zoom it or, or expand it out and then move it out a little bit. So you have this almost like bigger than IMAX 
like crazy. Look at this. And, uh, it just, this is just simply impossible to do in the real world. Like you can't, you know, I can't have this huge of a screen or two screens or whatever, or this one ultra wide screen physically in my kitchen right now, or, you know, on the plane or anywhere else. Like, and, and think of how expensive this would be to have this kind of projector. Well, it has to be projector. And when you have a projector that big, um, you know, you're not going to get the same quality as you get here. But let me, let me, um, I know it's, it's hard to tell from, you know, looking at this video feed of the Vision Pro, uh, because the quality is not going to be the same as what you see with your own eyes. But this thing is absolutely huge. Just for perspective, here's my, here are my hands, right? And that screen is amazingly large. Actually, let me make it a little bit smaller. That was just too big. So uh, just compare this to my kitchen. You can see my kitchen, you can see my MacBook Pro over there. And just look at the size comparison of that. Here's the iPhone here. That's the iPhone, that's a MacBook Pro. And look at the screen, that's a 14 inch MacBook Pro. And look at the screen here. Absolutely, absolutely humongous. It's huge. And I'm gonna attempt to kind of show you a little bit more from a different perspective. You can see that kind of the gray um, wrap around the curved screens there. And just to compare with, you know, the kitchen, that's the entire kitchen, my house. I'm gonna go back in the back a little bit. You can see it curves there. It's absolutely, so like, I can't even reach the top. That's super tall. So hopefully that gives you perspective of how amazingly huge this thing is. And think of how much productivity you can do with this. You know, if you're on a plane, for example, you can have this, you can have multiple, um, you know, Safari and whatever you do, like Final Cut Pro, uh, or Visual Studio, if you, or remote desktop, right? Remote desktop into your, uh, Windows PC. And just look at, look at, look at the screen real estate. I just can't get the fact that this, you know, get over the fact that this thing is so huge and it's, I've been using this to work and it works amazing. And just look at how smooth everything is. Like it's, there's no, virtually no lag and it, it, it's awesome. They implemented it really well. And yes, as I said, like you can, you know, get similar things with like other VR headsets, but like how many, how many, um, you know, of those other headsets is let you do it this easily. You don't have to configure anything. You just click or you actually can use your finger to click on that button and it connects. It's, it's just so simple. It works so well. And this is a game changer. Um, it's something that you have to experience yourself to, to, in, in order to appreciate this, but it's actually a game changer. All right, so, so let's take a look at the resolution real quick. I know we looked at the resolution of this ultra wide already, but I wanna show you. So it's 5120 by 1440. We're gonna go to the widescreen. So that's gonna shrink a little bit. And now it's just a, a, a wider screen than, than the normal. And that's 3360 times 1440. And then we're gonna go back to normal, which is the default slash typical screen that you'd get. That's 2560 by 1440. So didn't just stretch out, it increased the resolution obviously. So you have more screen real estate and it's just amazing. A couple other things with the Vision OS 2.0 is that if you, you know, you, you can have now your, um, I guess new gesture navigation thing where if you see your palm, you can go to the menu or you can flip over and, you know, go to control center and notification and all that stuff. So the other thing with the Vision OS 2 is that the ability to make any picture taken on any phone, in this case, the iPhone 16, um, I didn't take it using my Vision Pro, but I want to make this picture a uh, spatial picture, I guess that's what they call it. 
So right now it's just a 2D picture of this, you know, awesome <laughs> crispy pork basil or Thai crispy pork basil and waffle for brunch. Um, but I want to make it spatial. Um, I want to make it 3D. So all I have to do is click on that spatial button and it's going to analyze it. Apparently use AI to analyze the depth and use the depth information to analyze a photo and create this crazy <laughs> 3D photo. I feel like I can touch that pepper and ooh, pork belly, crispy pork belly, and the fluffy waffle there. But yeah, that's so that's one other thing of this new Vision OS. So let's talk about the Vision Pro a little more. So yes, now with the new Vision OS, even though it's still beta right now, I think it's pretty amazing. I'm definitely more excited and I'm definitely using this Vision Pro a lot more than, you know, the past few months. Now, you can make the software as good as, you know, whatever. Um, you're still limited by the physics, right? This thing to me is still he too heavy, definitely crazy heavy. It needs to be like, I don't know, 50% of the weight uh, in this form. And it's still too big, like especially the light seal, you know, it's just make everything so bulky. And with the weight, I even though I have the strap, which helps a lot as an accessory, um, I still can't use it for more than let's say an hour or two hours at most. And then I have to, you know, take a break. Because otherwise my you know, my neck, my head stuff feel kinda tired. Um so that's that and, and that also make the portability of this Vision Pro, since the size is so huge and the case that you can buy for it is absolutely huge. Um, it's a nice case or a carrying case, but this takes up like half the amount of carry on, you know, luggage, your typical carry on luggage. So if you're going to travel with this, if you're going to fly with it. It's going to take up a lot of space and you don't want to load this into the, uh, you know, the bottom of the plane in the car gear or whatever. So that there's that. And then the, the last thing that I hate about Vision Pro is, you know, even though it is an Apple product and they are known to have amazing ecosystem in immigrate, uh, immigration, <laughs> integration with other Apple devices. And it's, as we can see in this case, it's great with the MacBook Pro. Like you can, you know, look at the MacBook Pro, click on the button and have this virtual display. Amazing. But it doesn't work so well with the iPhone. And I can't believe Apple let this happen. Like you can't, when you use a Vision Pro, you can't even unlock your phone because it can't read your face ID, use it doesn't see your eyes, all that stuff. So I don't know why they can't do something like the Apple Watch, where if you're authenticated using Optic ID uh, on the Vision Pro, you should be able to unlock your phone easily without having to scan your face again. And why don't they also um, do the screen mirroring that you can interact with now, like, like on the Mac, you can, right? You can have the iPhone mirroring and you can click on, you know, on the Mac, uh, on the iPhone to interact, you know, with your phone just on the MacBook Pro. Why can't you do that on the Vision Pro? Because that would eliminate the need to unlock your phone and, you know, look through, look at the iPhone screen through the camera feed the video feed of the Vision Pro, which is terrible. Um, I still, people say that, that this video feed or whatever this call, um, you know, where we see like your environment and stuff is amazing on the Vision Pro. I still think it needs to be better. Like the cameras are still not high resolution. I know it has to do the 3D all and stuff, but just to conclude, I think this Vision OS 2.2 really, you know, make this Vision Pro exciting again to use. And it's going to be a, productivity device it's amazing but it doesn't solve a lot of the annoyance like with the integration with the iphone you can't use the iphone while using the vision pro and it doesn't resolve the physics which is still too heavy too big to carry around and on top of that the price tag like five, almost five thousand dollars for this i think is definitely way 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 out out of budget for a lot of people it's definitely too expensive it's not worth it However, one last thing, if you compare this to like what you can get in the, uh, you know, if you have two huge 4K display, uh, if you have to go buy those, that's probably going to be more than $5,000 of this Vision Pro. Anyways, that's my thought on the Vision Pro after about nine months of use. 
I hope you like this content. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.